stunning pictures this morning out of Yellowstone. Uh, many areas around Yellowstone Lake is my favorite part of the park. Explosive super eruptions are among the most intense phenomena that have ever occurred on Earth's surface. Fortunately, no such incident has occurred in recorded history. The last massive volcanic explosion was 26 and a half thousand years ago. The only clues to better understanding super eruptions and their impacts may be found in the geological record, notably along the Yellowstone Path. The park is mostly in Wyoming's upper left region, although it also extends into Idaho and Montana. The Yellowstone National Park covers 3,472 square miles, which is nearly the size of Puerto Rico. This national treasure is where scientists discovered scary discoveries that have the potential to alter everything. Stay tuned as we bring you these amazing findings. Yellowstone National Park, founded in 1872 and mostly located in Wyoming, is one of the country's most popular national parks with millions of visitors each year. Yellowstone is one of the biggest national parks in the United States, spanning almost 3,500 square miles and extending into sections of Montana and Idaho. Yellowstone National Park sits on top of a dormant supervolcano capable of a magnitude 8 eruption. Some parts of the park are only three miles above magma or molten rock, the park also has more geysers and hot springs than any other place on the planet, and there are many wonders to see at this truly unique national park, including America's largest buffalo herd, grizzly bears and wolves. It is one of the most popular national parks in the world. It is, in reality, the world's first national park, established almost 20 years before Wyoming, Idaho and Montana were recognised US states. When the first visitors to Yellowstone attempted to publish their findings, news publications said, thank you, but we do not print fiction. Their suspicion was well-founded, since the features were simply too amazing to be real. Yellowstone must be seen to be believed. With its vibrant hot springs, mud pots, and breathtaking waterfalls, nothing compares to Yellowstone. And there is something for everyone, from youngsters to grandparents. The Yellowstone National Park has around 50% of the world's hydrothermal features, giving the impression that the Earth is on fire. Old Faithful, one of the most popular and well-known natural marvels in the United States, is the most renowned of all the geysers. Native Americans referred to the yellow sandstone along the Yellowstone River when they gave the area the name Yellowstone. However, the name of the park actually comes from the sandstone along the Yellowstone River in eastern Montana which is actually 700 miles downstream and northeast of the park. People often assume that Yellowstone got its name from the vivid yellow colours seen in the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. While Yellowstone is a sight to see, there are some disturbing aspects to the national park. Indeed, the first one we discuss is better imagined than experienced, and even contemplating it might make you cringe. Yellowstone's hot springs are fascinating to see and even photographed due to their vibrant hues. But what if a guest falls into one of them? Before we go, let us state unequivocally that swimming in any of the hot springs is a bad idea. This volcanic caldera lies atop one of the world's biggest magma bodies, which is fed by an upwelling plume of superheated material. Because of this dynamic and violent subsurface of plumbing, the water bodies above the surface, especially the many geysers and springs, are highly acidic, very hot, and lethal to wildlife. Yellowstone National Park remains a wild and occasionally frightening area. That's why 4 million visitors visit the park each year to see unspoiled panoramas, wild bears and bison, and get up close and personal with hot gushing geysers and boiling thermal springs. However, the unique natural elements that make Yellowstone so appealing may also make it dangerous for unwary tourists. While backcountry hikers are fully aware of the dangers posed by grizzlies and bison, Yellowstone tourists can get into serious trouble while roaming near the park's popular geyser basins and other geothermal attractions. On June 7, 2016, Colin Nathaniel Scott, 23, of Portland, Oregon, slipped and tragically fell to his death in a hot spring near Porkchop Geyser. He and his sister illegally left the boardwalk and walked more than 200 yards in the Norris Geyser Basin where the accident happened. While we can all agree that it was a dreadful way to go, 
what happened to his body after he fell into the water. The first thing was that his body felt like he was soaking in water that was roughly 93 degrees Celsius, 199 degrees Fahrenheit, but only for as long as his neural system could perceive pain, which mercifully, or regrettably, won't be more than a minute or two. At this temperature, the late visitor's epidermis soon broke down and disintegrated. His blood vessels within his dermis would break shortly after, resulting in significant blood loss. Instead of breaking down, certain underlying skin layers lost all of their water and turned leathery and darkened, and his underlying subcutaneous fat would soon burst off as well. All of this, known as a full thickness burn, occurred in less than a minute, causing his nervous system to go into shock and become irrevocably destroyed. At this point, his organs began to fail, despite the fact that acute heat stress would have already shut down some of them. Death would have occurred in two to three minutes. The acidity of the water then totally takes over. Some of the hot springs really contain somewhat alkaline waters, but many, including the one the visitor fell into at Norris Geyser Basin, are very acidic with pH values of about two. The lower the number, the more acidic it gets. With such high acidity levels and temperatures, even the skeleton doesn't have a chance. Within a few hours, the guest was gone, gone into nothing. That was startling, but there's more. Old Faithful is slowing down, said Rick Hutchinson, who has been researching the park's major tourist attraction since 1970. One day, it might just quit permanently, he warned. In 1970, when I got here, the average interval was 66 minutes. Today, it is 77 minutes. In the 1970s, it was more regular. Our forecast had a margin of plus or minus five minutes. Now it's plus or minus 10 minutes. The interval has now grown dramatically. The geyser's reputation for reliability dates back at least 150 years, when members of an expedition led by Montana Surveyor General Henry Washburn and Montana politician and businessman Nathaniel Langford called it Old Faithful. It has been called the Guardian of the Valley, noted geologist Ferdinand Hayden, who conducted a further scientific expedition in 1871. It is so regular in its operations and they occur so frequently that it has afforded unusual facilities for observation. Many visitors to Old Faithful may be unaware of the precise mix of heat and water necessary to keep the geyser ejecting a fountain of hot water and steam from its sophisticated subsurface plumbing on a daily basis. So what exactly is the concern with Old Faithful? The geyser has been inactive for hundreds of years, most likely due to the water half of the equation being out of balance. The geyser ceased to erupt at the conclusion of the so-called medieval climate anomaly, during which many regions throughout the world experienced protracted periods of warm, dry weather. It's the time when we had grapes growing in northern England and a loss of sea ice that allowed people to discover Greenland, said Cathy Whitlock, a paleoclimatologist at Montana State University in Bozeman. We know in Yellowstone it was both warmer and drier, the upper tree line was higher up the slopes and there is evidence of more fires during that period. She also mentioned the catastrophic droughts in the region persisted for decades. Researchers have also discovered that earthquake-induced changes in the ground may affect geyser eruption intervals which is likely one of the major reasons Old Faithful currently erupts on average every 94 minutes, compared to about 60 to 65 minutes in the 1950s. However, researchers found no evidence of considerable seismic activity around the time of Old Faithful's dormant phase. Therefore, they determined the pause was most likely caused by the dry environment. The Yellowstone region is once again suffering droughts, this time most likely due to human-induced global warming. In 2008, a group of scientists released a report suggesting that years with decreased precipitation at the end of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st century have likely added a minute or two to Old Faithful's eruption cycle. If the climate continues to dry, the geyser might shut down totally. But if you want to visit Yellowstone before it dries up, be prepared for earthquakes, lots of them. This is because the National Park suffers many earthquakes on a normal day which is not surprising given that the Yellowstone area is seismically active. But how common are earthquakes in the park? Yellowstone averages between 1,500 and 2,000 earthquakes each year over the long term. 
Let's look at statistics from the previous decade, from 2010 to 2019, to better comprehend this average. During these 3,652 days, the USS seismograph stations at the University of Utah identified 17,243 earthquakes in the Yellowstone region, giving an average daily number of earthquakes of 4.7, or one earthquake every 5.1 hours. However, because approximately half of these events occur in swarms, they are not uniformly distributed across time. For example, over the previous decade, the USS recorded 14,080 earthquakes in the Utah region, for an average of 3.9 earthquakes per day, or one every 6.2 hours. However, scientists are not even identifying every earthquake that occurs in Yellowstone, or anywhere else for that matter. The capacity to record and detect an earthquake is directly tied to the quantity and location of seismometers in the region, known as the seismic network. When an earthquake occurs, seismic energy spreads in all directions, but the energy decreases as it travels away from the source. To determine the position and timing of an earthquake, at least four stations must record it. As a result, if you don't have a dense seismic array, it's difficult to record and pinpoint extremely small earthquakes since you can't sufficiently record small earthquakes on enough stations. The energy from such little quakes disappears far too quickly to be captured by the seismic network. The strongest earthquake in recent years was a magnitude 4.8 in March 2014 in Norris Geyser Basin, which was widely felt throughout the area. Let us know whether you're still keen to visit Yellowstone in the comments section below.